So good evening, uh, friends. Uh, one second. So thank you for that introduction, uh, Ben Seren. And thank you for inviting me for this session. And I think it is something quite important and helpful, especially during this pandemic, when we all are looking for some sort of relief. Let me put it that way. So some sort of relief. And um, I believe many of you are quite versant in uh, the meditation practice. And uh, because you are keen, you have therefore been participating to this session. So because we seek some sort of, um, shall I use the word again, happiness or some sort of relief, which I've been using. Um, so let me just maybe let you know, tell you that sometimes it's not nice to join a session with some sort of um, expectation because that is what we are also trying to be free from. So if we are to think of happiness, it is about being free. So that is how we have been learning uh, or even teaching. The more you are free, the more you are happy. The more you are free, the more you can be at peace. So with the invitation from Pinsara again, with regards to pandemic, we all have been facing some times of difficulty, perhaps not even being able to go out of your own premise or even to gather with friends. At other times, you know, we, if you don't no. like something or if you're not happy with something, we tend to just walk out of the door and then try to find some happiness. But, but in meditation or from meditation, what we are trying to do is trying to develop this mindfulness, develop mindfulness to not control your mind as such, but to develop awareness through concentration. When that happens, the expectations that we usually habitually have, we set ourselves free from that. So the expectations that I'm talking about is about the normal tendencies that we have deep within ourselves. So we develop observation skills and we develop observation skills without forming a judgment. And this is where we come into eventually to make it a second nature of our own life. So if we are mindful, if we are aware, we really have some form of control, in a sense, some form of choice. Mindfulness gives you a choice or gives you the choice of what you actually do rather than habitually being carried away by the normal tendencies. So most of us are quite familiar with the type of understanding that we have in Buddhism. So this is not necessarily 
um, limited to a religion or a philosophy, but as humans, we we develop some form of habits or some form of conditioned mentality always driven by few roots of thoughts, thought processes. So we call that in loose terms, likes and dislikes. Likes and dislikes are always at the forefront. They become the filtering process for us as individuals. Every moment or every second is spent through the processing of dislikes and dislikes, whether consciously or unconsciously. And it is quite important to realize not this not as a theory, but as a practice or practically to experience this through meditation. Because when you realize this, you develop that wisdom rather than being controlled by those thoughts unconsciously. So every moment we spend time developing or forming opinions of the things that we perceive. The five senses are the gateway and information flows to the mind, which is at the center of these five senses. So that the mind usually gets distracted by the things that seem to be entertaining. I recently was listening to a talk and then this venerable referred to these uh, sensory distractions as imagine that these objects that enter through your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, now these are the five physical senses. The mind is also a sense. So let's take it six senses. So imagine there are six different types of animals that you are holding your rein. And every animal, which is quite different. So if it was a dog, a puppy, or if it was a cat, they all have their own interests. I'm sure you won't have uh, some ferocious animals, but whichever animal that you can think of, imagine you think of six types of animals and they are then pulling the rain to get an, their attention. And then the mind actually gets attracted to the most attractive one. Now, not that the, now your, our ears are open, but that doesn't mean that we are not listening or hearing, but maybe at the moment you are now gluing your eyes to the screen. So either the eyes or the audio or both are quite attractive at the moment. None of you are quite aware of your bottom, which might be hurting a little bit because you've stayed for a while. Because you're so much glued into that attractive point of attention. So in meditation, we can sit for five minutes and we can feel all these distractions and attractions whatever you call them. But while watching a TV for three hours, if it is your lovely film, you won't feel any pain. But the moment you actually sit down to meditate, you will feel all the pain in your body. Now, there must be a reason for this. So it is that attraction <clears throat> that the mind actually is seeking. And every time it is seeking something that entertains it most, whether it is a visual, audio, smell, taste, physical sense or physical feeling, sensory experience. And sometimes when none of these are <clears throat> prevalent, 
<coughs> excuse me, even thoughts arising within oneself become an attractive point, such as memory, sadness, happiness. And this is what actually keeps the mind occupied. It's a big challenge. The mind always engages with something. Now, I will repeat this again. This is happening either consciously or unconsciously. Even consciously, you are trying to apply your attention to something. Something might start bugging you deep inside. You will be starting wandering things, wandering into things, looking at things, or planning, or worrying. So you are at home and you are sitting now. And if you are listening to me, perfect. But maybe you've also been actually thinking of lots of scenarios while I've been explaining these things. So while you're listening to me, deep inside, lots of scenarios, oh, this is what happened to me. This is what this venerable is telling. We always calc doing something while you're listening to me. But perhaps what might happen is, so my, my next point might be missing. And, and it can happen when we are listening to something, we will always make some sort of reference. Now, this is a tendency that we start referring to, that reference moment takes every time, whether whatever we are doing, there is always a reference point that we link it to these sensor experiences. Again, audio, visual, you know, smell, taste, physical feeling, and mental sensory experience is always linked to a bar that we create, a reference point. It can be a memory, can be an experience, can be a knowledge, can be your professional knowledge, anything. And because we develop this referring, referring skill, this reference moment, we then develop a habit of judging. So we form opinions all the time. And opinions can be categorized into two major groups, abhijja, dhormanasa, or likes and dislikes. So even if you like something, you will form a comment in your head. You will start thinking, oh, maybe it should be like this, or it shouldn't be like this. If you don't like something, then you are going to look for an alternative. An alternative is then proving not dislike as dislike, but again, proving something that is deep inside as a craving or attachment that you have to that reference point. So I might not like something, which means I like something better. So there is always something that again refers or roots to your likes. So for those who are familiar with, again, a Pali term solitude, it's called Sankaparaga. So there is a mental condition thought that you have created and you attach or you get attached to this. You get attached to this. So now, even if I am seeing something and if that is the best, then that becomes my next reference point. If I hear something that is the best so far, then that becomes the next reference point to what I hear. Imagine the food, same thing. How many of us have actually eaten the food as we eat, chewing it properly, rather than planning the next mouthful, or rather than commenting on the food? I mean, enough salt, not enough, and if maybe if this was there, that would be better. No, we are master chefs rather than actually mindful eating. We always make a comment on it. And this is habitually happening. So when we eat, are we mindfully eating? Taking the, the movements of our hands to the movement to the mouth to chew it, rather than actually chew and then start planning the next mouthful or being a master of commenting about the food. 
So when we make that comment, remember, we are always referring to a taste in our mind. So this is what makes us actually dissatisfied with our human experiences daily, because we are always linking it to something else, whether it is your personal living at home nowadays, whether it is your personal experience, the TV channel you watch or the music you listen to, we always form some sort of comment. You know, we are a good commentator. I don't know whether, you know, as if we are like having a, a job as a commentator, we're always commenting on every second, every experience. Second is even too long, it can be nanoseconds. So, so we always end up dissatisfied. And because of this dissatisfaction, we're then looking for something that might satisfy us. So habitually, we are forming opinion, forming opinion through our experiences, which we call sankhara, and we are always judging something. So to go into technical uh, side, now this idea that came at that given second or given moment comes through the existence of couple of things, the object, your sense wide awake, and your consciousness, your awareness. So remember, brain is not the mind. Mind is very different. Every moment is a new mind. Every moment is a new, every thought is a new mind uh, creating mental thought. So I see this cup, for example. So because I saw this, now I have this, but this is my cup. Now see, I'm making this link. Hmm. So that object is there, my, my eyes are there, and I'm aware of it. So the three things existing creates a thought. Now everything is like that. So the problem is that thought, if we hook into it, then we call that the state of being conditioned. So the cup or the external or the internal, when it actually amalgamates all three for existing, <coughs> then that is the new thought of, of the item. Now we fail to realize that that thought is momentary. Now every, say for example, the whole day, 24 hours, imagine how many thoughts arise. And just remember, how many do we link to? How many thoughts do we remember? So the ones that you actually hooked into, the ones that actually you liked or disliked stays in the memory. Others are just forgotten or others are just passing by unconsciously. And when it passes by consciously, unconsciously, there are still the thoughts that are happening. Like when you drive, cars pass by. Do you notice every cars? You will notice one thing that grasps your attention. And similarly, in our conditioned mindset, there are thoughts that we actually get hooked into we cling into. And this is what we call, the moment you actually hook yourself into it, we are conditioning ourselves. So we become conditioned by that thought. That thought is then polished up by perceptions or, or our own knowledge pre-existing or uh, as I said, all the knowledge that we have makes us link to that. And it's the way we link to it brings us this judgmental value that we always make. I like it, I don't like it. And we always spend the time thinking like this. Now, this is not what we think, but this is what happens. Now, we are not saying next one, next time I'm gonna do this, it doesn't happen. It happens automatically. And this is a habit that we need to actually be mindful of. And therefore, when we cling on to ideas, we are creating problems. When you create problems, we need to now learn how to be free from it. If you are not free, then there is always this dissatisfaction. So that's why 
uh, to create a form of direct experience, we need to be mindful. If we are not mindful, then we can't have that direct experience. We, we need to actually be directly experiencing that to be mindful. If you let it happen, we are not mindful. So when we are not mindful, we are being controlled by our thought processes. But when you are mindful, you have a choice. What you do with it, are you going to get involved with it? Are you going to get involved with it? If you get involved with it, you are already making a, a judgment about it and then dealing with it. Now, this might seem quite bizarre. You know, why are we not involving with thoughts? Yes, we are. We are involving with our experiences. That's fine. The only point we're trying to uh, try to be here is, if we are not mindful, we fail to develop this choice. So we are not developing uh, some sort of skill in such a way uh, that we can get rid of everything. You know, people think that, oh, when I meditate, everything will go away. And that is also an expectation which we develop. No, we are not developing that sort of remedy, but we are developing some sort of observation skills so that we know what is happening and then we don't get involved with it. So observation skills, so being mindful, where is your mind at the given moment? Is it in the past? Is it in the thought? Is it in the future? Rather than in the present moment. So when we develop this observation skills, we don't judge. We don't get involved with it. So getting involved means staying with the object and getting further conditioned. So we use this quite often. There are, if there is a bit of sand here, you know, the, the water, when it is still, the sand also is at the bottom of the glass. But you stir it up, then it starts getting muddy. Getting involved is like that, stirring up all your deep-rooted uh, negative human values sometimes or emotions and however, whatever you call it. You stir it up in such a way that you can't free yourself from it. Lots of the time when they get stirred up, the emotions, then we start victimizing ourselves. Especially sometimes it's to do with your previous memories, all the sentiments or all the emotional stories start coming up because that reference point gets triggered. So when it gets triggered, sometimes we fail to actually learn how to free ourselves. So during meditation, what we do is we develop this concentration skill through the concentration skill we develop to identify each moment of the mind, each moment of the mind. Now, for those who are quite used to Abhidhamma, we call eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, mouth consciousness or tongue consciousness, body consciousness and mind consciousness. Now, remember the word here is used mind consciousness as well. So mind consciousness is also a thought, a new thought arising due to the old thought. So it's not the brain, but it's, you might, and I don't know how scientists might see it, but I, I can refer to that next session. Uh, but in, in, in Buddhism, every thought arises due to the existing condition that is there. If one is not there, then it will not arise. So as I said, I, object and awareness, when they all three exist, it's called eye consciousness. No smell or object that enters the nose, 
the nose as a sense and then your awareness, then it becomes uh, nose consciousness or smell consciousness. Now they're all immediately vanishing because as soon as it uh, is in the eye, I will, the mind will not stay there. If the mind attention was grasped by the ear, then we call it ear consciousness. Similarly, most of the time, it is the, the mind consciousness where we actually dwell in our thoughts. We either daydream or we actually remember something and try to rewrite the stories behind it. Because we are, when we sit down to meditate sometimes, our eyes are closed, so the major distracting point is gone. Here, we sometimes fail to hear unless it is uh, something that this, uh, when, when, when other objects get boring, like your breathing or your other focus uh, point gets boring, then even the slightest noise distracts you. When even that gets boring, your pain will start distracting you, your knee pain or your 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 you know, back or bottom you know, aching will start distracting you. So every moment it is actually going somewhere. If not, some story comes to your mind or some incident and you, you stay there dealing with it, trying to rewrite the story, which you know you can't, but you still stay there. You know the future hasn't come, but we still are happy to actually stay in the future moments. When literally what we are doing is sitting down to meditate. So when we actually do that, it is to be aware of where your mind was. And I call that which channel was your mind in? Was it in the eye channel? Was it in the ear channel? Nose, tongue, body, or mind? Where was your mind? Be mindful of it. Be aware of it. And when we be aware of it, it's not that we are actually listing the things but just notifying or noting it and then not staying there, not even thinking about it. So if it was a sound that you hear, we are not actually listening to it. We hear the sound as sound. We are not actually even identifying as the sound of a bell. Well, this sound is very nice. Now, when you hear that sound, if you say it's a bell sound that even is getting involved with it because when you use the word bell or gong your mind then goes to a reference point again and now you will say oh it's very nice thank you for hitting it again or you will say it's a so lovely one I want to use it I want to get one more meditation next time can you see how many thoughts again proliferated with that simple Now you will say, what is this? He's crazy man. <laughs> because that friction was not pleasant. Then you, now you got angry. You got annoyed. Now it is that friction. It is that, that moment that every moment created that we actually refer to. We actually get involved in, in the way that we want to get involved. That is where the problem is. How are we getting involved with that? And and we know if you get involved, all your thoughts get stirred up to get involved with it. But actually the, the secret to this happiness is don't get involved. Just hear it as a sound. Sound as sound. <coughs> That's it. Nothing else. If you hear it in your refer re referral mode, then if we are 20 of us here, 20 of us will actually have 20 different opinions. So it's not the reality. What I'm hearing is actually my way of listening to it. So therefore, then again, it is your personal opinion rather than the sound. So what is it? So it is the, so how do we deal with the thoughts then? The same thing when emotions come, sadness come, it's okay. Don't don't actually say, "Oh, I'm actually meditating." No, no. Don't get. Uh, no. When sadness comes, see the sadness as sadness, not like, "Oh, why did it happen to me?" No. How should I get in, uh, out of it next time? 
So, you know, once we get involved with it, these are the thoughts that might proliferate. Anger, then you then you know you can't forgive. You have so much uh, rage developing within you. And all this is because we are getting involved with it. And we, why are, what are we getting involved with? An incident which is beyond your reach. An incident which is a memory, but you are still victimizing yourself. You are still thinking about it in a negative way. Now, if you see that as a thought that just arose in your mind, we free ourselves. Just learn how to free yourself. Don't get involved with it. You go to the mirror first thing in the morning and you start looking at your face. I don't know how many thoughts will come up. You know? Or if you wear a nice dress, you know, there's a small dirt in your nice dress. What we do is try to get rid of it quickly. And same thing, we wash our face and then we, rather than planning so many things, just wash your face and then, and then be happy with it, for example. Or as I said, you know, the, what the suttas talk about, you know, if you get dirt in your, in your clothes, we want to get rid of it quickly, like that. If some thoughts come to you and you know the dangers of it, free yourself from it. So we don't have to go that far. But what the point I've been trying to make here is, it is the way we get involved with it, form opinions, with judgments, make us actually dissatisfied. And this is where uh, the key problem is. And when we actually get involved with it, we start feeding our desires, feeding our dislikes, feeding our ego, feeding our personality, and they all get stirred up for that referral point to be bitter or for that experience to be bitter. Now, this does not mean that we actually don't find solutions, but this is to actually not to actually emotionally get attached to those things. And therefore, when we realize the channels, eye consciousness, ear consciousness, that is the time that it is happening at the given moment. So like I said earlier, when we eat uh, food, is it the physical sense or is it the taste? Is it the smell or is it the sight of the food? Or is it the knowledge of the food that is actually feeding yourself? So is it the taste that you are feeding? Or is it the uh, smell, the good smell of the food? Or is it the knowledge of the food? Or is it the... So, but rather than actually every moment what is happening, if you're mindful of it, you rather enjoy the food rather than actually uh, being a commentator all the time. Similarly, every moment, every consciousness, if you are aware, it really, really empowers you because you develop the control or choice. If you got involved with it, you had no choice. You, 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 you're not. Organized it. If you, if you, if you get involved with it, then you lost the choice. You only decided to deal with it. So we have to just observe it and not to go into it, not to get involved with it. So this is why you know, when we say mindfulness gives you that ability to choose what to do. It's like a goalkeeper seeing the ball come. You need to, to catch the ball, you have to see the ball coming. And being aware of it is, doesn't mean you actually try to run away from it. You can stay, you can live with impatience. You can live with anger. You can live with uh, greed. When I say you can live, it means it's there in your head. But if you see it as a thought, as you saw this cup as a cup, if you see it as a thought, it will not have any power over you. Because in meditation, every object becomes a meditation object. Breathing is not meditation, remember. Breathing is not meditation. Breathing is an object for meditation. So we develop concentration through applying our attention to breathing. From there, we are not focusing on concentration. There are the concentration type of meditation. The type of meditation, if you are talking of mindfulness, is about developing 
the mindfulness through how then when and what the mind is engaging with so every thought whether it is sadness whether it is happiness becomes a very good meditation object don't worry don't say oh, it's not good even if you want to slap someone very good meditation object see it don't get involved with it and don't stand up and go and slap the person right because that is anger and just note there is anger this is anger and let it go hmm? if you want to if you have uh, desires coming or you know they're all they're good uh, like good weights in the gym you don't want to go to the gym to lift a feather as one put it you know they are very good meditation object if it comes you're lucky don't run away from that object you know don't don't think oh this is wrong this is bad i'm meditating i'm trying to be a good person i'm meditating no that is not the med- the uh, in, uh, intention of mindfulness meditation mindfulness meditation is making use of every moment to see where the mind is and be mindful of it and just note it don't get involved with it and then return so three r's recognize release return recognize where the mind was which channel it was not what it was doing which channel it is whether it is in the seeing hearing tasting feeling thinking recognize release don't stay there don't get involved let it go and then return to your breath return to breathing so r r r three r's and that is how we develop mindfulness so that we develop the ability to choose rather than getting swayed or you know swiped away by the waves of our thought processes so you are in control and then when you are in control you are creating your own happiness not the object outside but the happiness within so when you have the uh, it's just not the object that brings you happiness it's the way you actually perceive it so therefore you know this is how we start looking at into this mindfulness aspect and therefore when we do this practice for the next few minutes uh we are applying our attention to breathing so it's a purposeful attention that we are putting and then we are trying to break that habit of forming judgment of every moment uh, that the mind could possibly engage with so i think looks like i have spoken a lot so we will um, do some practice now so you have to stop leaning your back so simply because it takes off the attention that you're trying to develop so straight back right hand on your left palm and then you can sit wherever you are however you are as long as you form yourself like a statue so not so that you won't be moving for the next few minutes so you can move now adjust yourself a little bit if you're sitting on a chair or sofa feet firm on the floor <clears throat> and then eyes gently closed so once you have chosen the posture forget about everything even what i said just be right here right now wherever you are just be with yourself don't let your mind wander you know mind has the mind is not physical so it will just leave you and go quickly so don't allow that purposeful attention to developing mindfulness so just be aware what is happening now so i tend to do the mindfulness of your present posture to start off with which then slowly calms your mind down so be aware of how you are sitting so straight back body bent at the hips and knees and your feet firm on the floor so just getting that picture and seeing because that is what your body is doing at the moment nothing else 
If hands are the things that actually distract you most, just observe the hands now and how they are. Still, not moving. So your whole body is still. You can compare or contrast to other times when you're busy. Or even when your mind was very restless. How was your body? It's a completely different picture, isn't it? Very quiet, peaceful. Absence of restlessness in your mind indicates that stillness in your body. And be mindful of those sitting with you, supporting the practice. Don't comment on those who are not with you now, but just be mindful of them without commenting, without judging. So now be mindful of one thing that is quite in action or in motion or in activation. You're breathing. Your whole body is still, but you're breathing. And just observe that breath. Note the breath. Visualize the breath as it is happening. Remember, breath is not meditation, but being mindful of it is meditation. Being aware of it, the purposeful attention, is meditation. So there is nothing to like or dislike even in the breath. It happens automatically. We never plan, I'm going to take this breath, or I'm not going to take this breath. So there's nothing to actually even think of the future. Neither is there to think about the breath that you took, because you're already in the new breath. And just observe that breath. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. When you pay close attention, that breath is not the same as the previous one. You don't have to compare, but every breath is different. So when you stay with the breath, you are with the breath in a duration mode. So watch the breath as soon as it starts taking place until the end of that in-breath. Note the moment you start to breathe out until the end of the breath. If you are quite new to this, you can do the counting method. So note the start as one, the continuity as two, and the moment you finish breathing, three. Similarly, the start of outbreath is three, two, one. Now, counting is not meditation, it's just to help you to develop that purposeful attention skill that we are developing mindfulness. And remember, the three R's should your mind get distracted, recognize. Release, return to breathing.
So you can slowly open your eyes once you finish hearing the piano. So that is about 10 plus minutes for you mm. of the course of the practice that I have been talking about. So, and we can have a few minutes for discussion if you have any questions or any misunderstandings that, or any clarification that you may want further. Uh, Saman Sadhu, um, <clears throat> I think it would be uh, ideal if you could explain uh, the sponge analogy about the mindfulness last time you uh, explained to us um, for the benefit of our participants today, if you don't mind. Yeah, the sponge analogy came. Uh, it is what it, it, uh, that is to explain how perhaps the ability of our minds, um, mind being center of the five senses or even the six senses, or every moment is new as I just explained. But perhaps we all are individually different and uh, you can take yourself as the sponge to see how much you can cope with the droplets of water. So if you hold the sponge under the tap, with the dripping water, drop by drop, drop by drop. The sponge takes only to a certain amount it can hold. And it can might hold maybe about 100 drops, we don't know. So it is like you are able to cope with 100 things. And suddenly, when the sponge is full, then again, the water starts dripping from below the sponge, drop by drop, so it can't hold anymore. So our mind is like that. When our mind cannot cope, when there's so many things happening, you know, as I said, every moment we are living with a dissatisfied experience. And you know, sometimes if we don't free ourselves, you know, we'll always get frustrated and uh, you know, irritated, you know, angry. And we start actually showing our emotions to other people by sharing, because that is when your energy level is down. Uh, inability to cope with those. So I see meditation as a time to still yourself in such a way that you actually squeeze the sponge so that you develop more capacity to hold more moments of um, uh, experiences. And uh, that meditation time is like squeezing the sponge time to revitalize or re-energize whatever you want to uh, identify it as so that you are able to cope with the uh, situations. So sometimes we are able to cope with one or two situations and, uh, and some, of, some of the times we are holding certain situations in our mindsets until we free ourselves from that, we will always uh, be clouded or germinated or contaminated, whatever you call it, like the tea bag analogy. We always spend the moment uh, in the negative with a negative mindset. So freeing yourself from that is like squeezing the sponge so that you are able to again deal with new experiences with a new uh, outlook. Thank you very much. Has anyone else got any other questions? Please. Now is your time to ask. I can stop the recording if you want to ask questions. 